another word of God through Jesus Christ, Street and Outreach Ministry. Raw and Uncut Productions. And now, to the Word of God, through Jesus Christ, with Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. God bless you, and enjoy the message. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to the Word of God through Jesus Christ, Street and Irish Telecast. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr., and it is a blessing to be with you here tonight as we gather together late night again and tackle this task that the Holy Ghost has given us to do. We're going to continue on with Numbers chapter 16 and we're going to drain the meat and now drain the meat from this text. Now the other night the Lord had us all over the place covering many different areas uh, for many different demographics, not only that, but also ministering to uh, uh, many different uh, people and nations and so forth. But tonight, this morning, we're going to be used by the Holy Ghost as he uses this ministry to encourage the brother and the sister that are chosen out of a family. To also let them know the blessing of being in your right office, executing the correct anointing. Also, the relationship between an intercessor and a, or a chosen vessel and God is important. So uh, I'd just like to ask you to stay with me, have your Bibles, grab a pen or two, some paper to take notes because you're, you're really going to want to uh, remember this and examine this later. Always examine your notes in your time with God to make sure that the word that you're hearing is coming straight out of the word of God and not out of anyone's own interpretation, thoughts or ideas, or philosophies, for that matter. Okay? What I'm going to do right now is to pray over the broadcast, and then we're going to tackle this in the name of the Lord. Just want to make sure my lavalier is correct. 
Father, in Jesus' name, again, we come before you, asking you to forgive us for our sins and shortcomings and faults and our wrongs. Lord, I ask that you bless the production. I ask that you feed your sheep. I ask that you make me usable and use me. Fill me with the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. And give me a spiritual understanding of your word and pour it out of me, O oh God. And allow me to hear as well. Let the tongues fly. Let the prophecies go. The people that you handpick to sit around their television set, minister to them. You know each and every one that you are going to sit before the television set. Minister to them. You know who has uh, the audio CD of this coming broadcast. You know who's going to have it. Minister to them as they drive, or as they're sitting at home, or as they're sitting with other friends, telling them about the message and the ministry. I ask, Lord, that you feed those that will have it by cassette tape, that you should minister to them also. Feed those, O oh Lord, that will have it by DVD, that they should get fed, watching this over and over again that you should get all the glory. Whoever it offends, as long as it's the truth, so be it. I just thank you for the opportunity to be used by you and to be one of the voices that thou havest in the wilderness now, in this season, to minister to your people, to share correction, Reproof, rebuke, training, correct training, rightly divided in the word of truth, that the viewers and the listeners should be fed. I don't apologize for anything that you put in my spirit to say. I rebuke the devil tonight. We bind him by the power of the Holy Ghost. We bind him in the earth realm because he's already bound in the heavenlies. We plead the blood of Jesus against him. We command him to loose our stuff and let it go. Everything that you have promised us, we loose from his grip. And we plead the blood over our stuff as a covering. We plead the blood over ourselves as a covering. And we command him to go back to the pit of hell from where he came. And come back hither no more. Every demon that works for him, no matter what their name or rank is. Father, we cast them out by the power of the Holy Ghost. We plead the blood against those demons. It don't matter what their name is. It don't matter what their rank is. We plead the blood against them. We cast them out of our life and our affairs. And we loose our blessings and our stuff from their grip. We loose our family. We loose our children. We loose our prayer requests. We loose our finances. We loose everything that you've given us from their grip. And we plead the blood of Jesus over our stuff. That they can't touch it no more. And we command them to go back to the pit of hell also. From where they came. Oh Father. We thank you for the victory. We ask that you dispense holy and elect angels. From on high. To come into the earth realm. To be positioned in the place that we just cast them demons out. Instead of hindering spirits, we ask, Lord, that you dispense angels with help in their wings. Ministering angels, encouraging angels, angels that come with the blessing in their wings. And we thank you for being our God <laughs> and our refuge. And our shield and our buckler. 
Oh God, we thank you for being the battle axe in the time of the battle. Now Father, just teach tonight. You gave me no paper with nothing written down tonight. You told me to grab the other night's sermon. I did. You said to grab the notes, the other notes on demonology. I did. But other than that, you gave me nothing to write. You said I'll meet you there as I use you. And I'm trusting you because you've never let me down before. So Father, please do the teaching. Bless those that you use to share in the ministry's work. You told me don't beg and I'm not going to. You told me don't build a sermon on it and I'm not going to do that either. That's not what we're supposed to do. The cash app link is there. I ask that you steer those that hear you to it to be a blessing unto the ministry. And whatever they share, I ask, Lord, that you restore their purses, their pockets, their finances, their love offering, the blessing. In Jesus' name, allow me to decrease that you may increase. And those that are watching by television, bless them. Those that are watching by social media, bless them. Those that are watching by YouTube, bless them. Mm. In the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you for hearing me and for answering me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Again, I'd like to ask you to turn to Numbers chapter 16. Now, I have a King James Bible right here on the podium in front of me. But I'm led to read out of the Living Bible because there's some things that the Holy Ghost wants us to see. I'm going to read the whole chapter like the Lord led me to do the other night. And it's in case you forgot or you missed it and don't know what the chapter says. I will not ignore grammar or punctuation marks. And I ask that you don't either. Read with me. Numbers chapter 16 starting at verse 1. And I believe it's 40 something verses. Yes, it's actually 50 verses. Oh, and it's going to be powerful. <laughs> oh, God. Are y'all ready? Let's go. Let's tackle this. Out of the Living Bible, number 16. Verse 1, one day Korah, son of Ishar, grandson of Kohath, and a descendant of Levi, conspired with Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, all three from the tribe of Reuben, to incite a rebellion against Moses. 250 popular leaders, all members of the assembly, were involved. They went to Moses and Aaron and said, We have had enough of your presumption. You are no better than anyone else. Everyone in Israel has been chosen of the Lord, and he is with all of us. What right? Do you have to put yourselves forward claiming that we must obey you and acting as though you were greater than anyone else among all these people of the Lord? When Moses heard what they were saying, he fell face downward to the ground. Then he said to Korah and to those who were with him, In the morning, the Lord will show you who are his and who is holy and whom he has chosen as his priest. Do this, you, Korah, 
and all those with you take censers tomorrow and light them and put incense upon them before the Lord and we will find out whom the Lord has chosen you are the presumptuous ones you sons of Levi then Moses spoke again to Korah does it seem a small thing to you that the God of Israel has chosen you from among all the people of Israel to be near to himself as you work in the tabernacle of Jehovah and to stand before the people to minister to them is it nothing to you that he has given this task to only you Levites and now are you demanding the priesthood also that is what you are really after that is why you are revolting against Jehovah and what has Aaron done that you are dissatisfied with him the Moses summoned Dathan and Abiram the sons of Eliab and they refused to come is it a small thing they mimicked that you brought us out of lovely Egypt to kill us here in this terrible wilderness and that now you want to make yourself our king what's more you haven't brought us into the wonderful country you promised nor given us fields and vineyards whom are you trying to fool we refuse to come verse 15 says then Moses was very angry and said to the Lord do not accept their sacrifices I have never stolen so much as a donkey from them and have not hurt one of them and Moses said to Korah come here tomorrow before the Lord with all your friends Aaron will be here too <laughs> be sure to bring your censers with incense on them a censer for each man 250 in all and Aaron will also be here with his so they did they came with their censers and lit them and placed the incense on them and stood at the entrance of the tabernacle with Moses and Aaron meanwhile Korah had stirred up the entire nation against Moses and Aaron and they all assembled to watch then the glory of Jehovah appeared to all the people and Jehovah said to Moses and Aaron get away from these people so that I may instantly destroy them but Moses and Aaron fell face downward to the ground before the Lord oh God the God of all mankind they pleaded must you be angry with all the people when one man sins and the Lord said to Moses then tell the people to get away from the tents of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. So Moses rushed over to the tents of Dathan and Abiram, followed quickly by the 250 Israeli leaders. Quick, he told the people, get away from the tents of these wicked men and don't touch anything that belongs to them lest you be included in their sins and be destroyed with them. So all the people stood back from the tents of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. And Dathan and Abiram came out and stood at the entrances of their tents with their wives and sons and little ones. And Moses said, By this you shall know that Jehovah has sent me to do all these things that I have done. For I have done, I have not done them on my own. Excuse me. Verse 29, if these men die a natural death or from some ordinary accident or disease, then Jehovah has not sent me. But if the Lord does a miracle and the ground opens up and swallows them and everything that belongs to them, and they go down alive into Sheol, then you will know that these men have despised the Lord. He had hardly finished speaking the words when the ground suddenly split open beneath them and a great fissure swallowed them up along with their tents and families and the friends who were standing with them and everything they owned so they went down alive into Sheol 
and the earth closed upon them, and they perished. All of the people of Israel fled at their screens, fearing that the earth would swallow them too. The fire came forth from Jehovah and burned up the 250 men who were offering incense. And the Lord said to Moses, Tell Eleazar the son of Aaron the priest to pull those censers from the fire, for they are holy, dedicated to the Lord. He must also scatter the burning incense from the censers of these men who have sinned at the cost of their lives. He shall then beat the metal into a sheet as a covering for the altar, and these censers are holy because they were used before the Lord. And the altar sheet shall be a reminder to the people of Israel. So Eliezer the priest took the 250 bronze censers and beat them out into a sheet of metal to cover the altar to be a reminder to the people of Israel that no unauthorized person, no one who is not a descendant of Aaron, may come before the Lord to burn incense, lest the same thing happened to him as happened to Korah and his associates. Thus the Lord's directions to Moses were carried out. But the very next morning, all the people began muttering against Moses and Aaron said, You have killed the Lord's people. Soon a great sullen mob formed. Suddenly, as they looked toward the tabernacle, the cloud appeared <laughs> and the awesome glory of the Lord was seen. Moses and Aaron came and stood at the entrance of the tabernacle and the Lord said to Moses, get away from these people so that I can instantly destroy them. But Moses and Aaron fell face downward to the earth before the Lord. And Moses said to Aaron, quick, take a censer and place fire in it from the altar. Lay incense on it and carry it quickly among the people and make atonement for them. For God's anger has gone out among them. The plague has already begun. Aaron did as Moses had told him to and ran among the people. For the plague had indeed already begun. And he put on the incense and made atonement for them. And he stood between the living and the dead and the plague was stopped. But not before 14,000 700 people had died in addition to those who had died the previous day with Korah. Then Aaron returned to Moses at the entrance of the tabernacle. And so the plague <laughs> was stopped. Let's say grace over our food. I got to pick up this pad that fell. Ugh. Let's say grace over our food. Let's sit this here. Father, in Jesus' name, forgive us for our sins and shortcomings and faults and wrongs. It is quite a blessing how when you use us to teach your word and to handle your word. And for those that are just preachers, you use them to preach your word. Long as you're using us in the way that you've called us, anointed us, and ordained us, and appointed us, then we operate successfully as long as you're the one leading us. Now, you're you allow me to see so much in this sermon, in this lesson, in this book, in this scripture, in this text. And I ask, Lord, that you demonstrate your level of teaching, deep teaching, not surface teaching, but below the surface. Make this lesson simple yet deep and deep yet simple in Jesus' name. And honor all the other prayers that went forth. Minister to your servants, the one you have chosen in a household, in a family. Those that you have sent out to represent you. And they go through the oppression. Or those that you want to raise up, but there's people holding them down, Father. Minister to them through this lesson. Minister to the one being held down and talk to the one that's doing the holding down and the click that joins with them. In Jesus' name, allow me to decrease 
that you may increase. <sighs> In Jesus' name, I thank you and I pray. Amen. Mm. I'm going to get the title out the way now. And then go forward with the presentation. Two nights ago, or last night, early morning, the title was, now you, you remember we just read what the Lord told Moses and Aaron to move out the way. Get away from Korah, Dathan, and Abiram and their tents and all that belonged to them. And tell the people to get away from them also. Because God dealt with them. Last night, the title was, Move Out of the Way. It's not over yet. And God is speaking in reference to the judgment that has went out over this nation. Tonight, right now, the title for this discussion is simply called Watch Out for the Bait and Switch because we're really not in this all together. Watch out for the Bait and Switch. For we are not really all in this together. Israel, after coming out of Egypt, which there was nothing good about the bondage and the oppression that they experienced while being in Egypt. There was nothing good about the past. God had them brought out of bondage and he chose the prophet Moses and his assistant was the pastor or the priest Aaron. There was also another person that's not mentioned right here that was helping him in the beginning. And it was his sister Miriam who was a prophetess. Now, one of the reasons the Lord had me to grab the sermon from the other night is because it's important to remember that in the movie the Ten Commandments they didn't tell this fact and a lot of ministers don't tell this fact because a lot of ministers don't study and that is the fact that Korah was Moses and Aaron's first cousin and Dathan and Abiram were Moses, Aaron and Korah's fifth cousin. Dathan and Abiram were related from the lineage of Reuben, Jacob's son, his oldest son. And Korah, Moses, and Aaron were related through the lineage of Eli. Moses and Aaron's father, Abiram, I mean Amram, excuse me, was the brother of Korah's father, Ishar. So this was a big family mess. Some of you can relate to this because in every household, in every household, there's always, by God, a chosen one or two, maybe three. 
unfortunately some people are under the impression that the whole household because you could go to some ministries that uh, a man may start and his family may be on board and be in there with him and all of them will be minister this minister that prophet this evangelist that there'll be so many leaders and yet no sheep so when you go into this ministry all of them <laughs> expect you to be the sheep that they practice ministering on. It's a big family mess. I have to look in this dictionary to look up this word that we just came across. Oh, okay. Thank you, Lord. So when we get to that word, I can give you the definition of it in case you don't already know. As we see Moses and Aaron in operation, we see the anointing, the two different anointings that are on these two brothers. Now, it's, it's important to understand, let's not look at Moses and Aaron, but let's look at the anointing that come from God. The prophet is the intercessor. The prophet is God's mouthpiece. The prophet is the one that God used in this example to bring his people out of bondage. And to minister to them along the way and giving the prophet his laws and his standards to explain to his people speaking on behalf of God was a very powerful exploit because as long as they listen to the prophet that walk with God they didn't go wrong Now, the pastor or the priest was the assistant to the prophet. Well, one of the things that the Lord used this ministry to share often from the word of God, I just pointed out from the word, and we come into it again right here, is that the pastor does not instruct the prophet or the prophetess. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Whenever God sends a prophet or a pro now you pastors need to listen to this. Whenever God sends a prophet or a prophetess to the ministry or in the vicinity or among his people, you are to be the assistant because that prophet and that prophetess is the mouthpiece of God. So actually it is wrong and out of order for the prophet or the prophetess to come and join the membership of a building when they have been sent by God to the body. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you understood that one. And one thing that a prophet is used to doing is working alone right now there's no one working with me in the ministry but me and I'm fine with that so even doing uh, when the Lord used me to do social media Facebook live I don't need no help I don't need no assistance because no God didn't give anyone the vision for this ministry but me now, when the Lord blesses me to enter into the covenant of marriage, my wife will be a prophetess. She'll know she's a prophetess. She won't try to play apostle. She won't try to play pastor or bishop. She, she won't uh, minister with her head uncovered. Well, the wig don't count. But she won't minister with her head uncovered. She won't worship God with her head uncovered. She'll be lined up with the word because God will not put you in an unequally yoked covenant because where there's 
unequal, unequally yokedness, he is not in the midst of that mess. Mm -mm. He said, with two or three gathered together, touching and agreeing about anything on earth, there I am in the midst. The unity has to be a unity that's fashioned after the standards of God. That's why he said, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, in, that's the English Bible, but in the Greek Bible, it says, whatsoever you bind on earth has already been bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth has already been loosed in heaven. So therefore, in the earth realm, you oh glory, you are speaking what God has already predestined and declared and decreed in heaven. You don't declare or decree nothing because you have no power apart from Jesus Christ. John 15 and 3, he told his disciples, you are clean by the word which I have spoken unto you. And then in verse 5, he said, apart from me, you can do nothing. There's too many people trying to operate without God. And it's kind of funny because I'm sitting back, not just me, but other apostles, my, my male brothers that are apostles, because in the Bible, apostles are men in the Strong's exhaustive concordance of the Bible. If you go into the Greek dictionary and you look up number 652, the word is apostolus, which is made up of apple and stello. Uh, and it says, it gives a definition, but the last one is he that is sent. It said nothing about them. And don't say, well, that's because it's universal. No, because where it's, where it's a female gender in the Bible, it says female. And where it's a male gender in the Bible, it says male. It says God created, in the image of God created he him, that meant Adam. Male and female created he them. Then he divided up the image. When he spoke of prophets in scripture in the Old Testament, they were called Nabi. When he spoke of prophetesses, they was called Nebiyah. There was a difference in the language. Now, when it comes to the office of evangelists, soul winners, those that witness on the Jesus Christ, that spread the good news, we all can do that, male or female. It doesn't matter. In the office of pastor in the New Testament and even in the old, you don't read about a priestess. You don't read about a female priest. Even in the New Testament, you don't read about that because it doesn't exist. It's time to line up with the word and stop trying to do all this stuff apart from God. Because if you look at what's going on now, no one is able on their own accolade. To stop this plague, this pandemic that happens to be running crazy all over this earth. People are so scared, again, that they're walking around like this. That demonstrates no power. <laughs> now on the news... They're talking about the hand sanitizer not being good for you. They're talking about there was a recall on certain hand sanitizer. Watch out for the bait and switch. Moses, Aaron, and even Miriam. I don't know where she was right here because I don't see her name. All of them and the rest of Israel came out of Egypt together. They came out on the same page. They, they came out on one accord. Now we get to number 16, chapter 16, yet verse 3, it mentions that Korah, 
Dathan, Abiram, and An, and 250 popular leaders, influential, if you will, world renowned, all members of the assembly, that's what that means, world renowned. They all were involved, and they went to Moses and Aaron. All of these people went to two men that God called, mind you, that God put in place to lead these people out of bondage, the prophet to lead them out, the pastor to assist him. <laughs> Why? Because the prophet needs to spend time with God and get constant instruction, as the prophetess would do. But the pastor, the priest, his job, his responsibility, what's is required of him is to guard the sheep. It's funny how when Moses went on the mountain to talk to God, how Aaron, they, they had Aaron build them that golden calf. It goes to tell you how weak some pastors are. Anyway, in verse 3 of number 16, they went to Moses and Aaron and said, we have had enough of your presumption, your arrogant arrogance. We've had enough of you trying to be the bomb trying to tell us what to do. You are no better than anyone else. Everyone in Israel has been chosen of the Lord and he is with all of us. The 26 years that I have been an apostle, I have, I, God has never allowed me to be one of those apostles with my nose up in the air. I'm from the streets. Before I got saved, I sold drugs. Weight. I'm not talking about no little skimpy $2 things. I sold weight. I did other things in the world. I never did crack. I did used to smoke weed a half ounce a day. <laughs> and it wasn't garbage either. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> when I was out there in the world, Plus, I taught martial arts. I'm, I'm a master of kung fu of over 12 different animal styles. And also having a black belt in Tong Sudo, which is a Korean karate. And a couple of other forms of martial science or martial arts under my belt. So when I was in the world, I did things, okay? And then when the Lord saved me, actually in 1984, no, yeah, 84, I fell. And then I came back to the Lord in 87 when my father got ready to die. He died of cancer when I was 21. Then I fell again. And then in 1990, I came back to God wholeheartedly and stayed. And I was told by a prophetess, an older prophetess, she's going on to be with the Lord now. I pray that's where she went. I'm sure she did. But she said unto me, Alan, the Lord is going to use you to teach and preach the gospel. And when she told me this, at the time, I had a bag of weed in my pocket and a beer in my hand. I've shared this testimony many times. So I didn't understand how is God going to use me to teach and preach anything when I'm living this way. Well, after that word by the prophetess was put out in the earth realm, things began to happen in my life. I had one of the most secure, one of the, a very secure job. I used to work at uh, Yale New Haven Hospital. I ended up hurting my back on the job. So from that moment on, things started happening in my life to push me toward God. You, you'll see where I'm going in a minute. Once the Lord allowed these things to push me to him in 1994 i was in jail for preaching because from 1990 to 1993 i had been 
shaped by God. I went down in the water, of course, in Jesus' name, to prove or to, to symbolize that I turned from a life of sin. And when I did that, I was going to Bible study, going to services. God had me going here, there, here, there, here, there. The different place. And I didn't know he was leading me and why. But he was leading me to where truth was this day and truth was that day and truth was that day. And he would let me go home and anoint me to study and to examine scripture to see if what I was being told was in the word. So by 1993... I was saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And the Lord sent me out to go visit some ministries in my city. He said, I'll show you what ministries to go to. Now, it's important to understand, if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, you usually have to go to people to hear what the Lord is saying. People that are already in leadership. But once the Lord fills you with himself, once he lives in you, once you're filled with the Holy Ghost for real, and I'm not talking about chanting and blah, 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 no, 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 I ain't talking about all that garbage. But once you're filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in unlearned tongues, that you can't copy, that you can't practice and rehearse, that you can't in, uh, uh, imitate or nothing. Once you get there, then you don't need to go to no man or no woman and say, what is the Lord saying? Because the Lord then is able to commune with you, to talk with you. To reveal to you the gifts that he has for you. There's the ministry gift. That he will have for you if indeed you're called into one of the fivefold. Those are ministry gifts. And then there's spiritual gifts that operate the ministry gifts. So, in 1994, I had been used by God even right before then to minister to people and minister to an individual specifically as well. And... Because of preaching, I ended up in prison. I shared this testimony many times also. And when the Lord allowed the enemy to put me in there, I said, Lord, why? I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm following you. Why am I in here? I ain't do nothing wrong. You said to minister. The court said don't minister. But you said to minister. I got to follow you. Why am I in here? And God said simply, you know me. Now let me show you your enemy and that he has power. So now God started teaching me that all these graves in the graveyard, he was not responsible for none of that. Because when he made male and female, it wasn't his will or desire for us to ever leave to die. For our soul to separate from our body. Yet it happened because of rebellion and disobedience. He said, I'm not responsible for none of that. He showed me the hospitals. He said, I'm not responsible for none of those sicknesses. Though I am sovereign and everything has to obey me when I speak, I am not responsible for those sicknesses in the hospital. I'm not responsible for the sicknesses that are taking people's lives. Oh, we're still going somewhere. I don't think we're off the subject. We're still right here on verse 3 of chapter 16 of Numbers. But I'm led by the Holy Ghost to share this. So, uh, he allowed me to be put in prison by the enemy. And when I got in there, and I was transferred to the prison, I was sentenced to... 13 months, but I had already been getting arrested for ministering anyway, so I had some good time accumulated. <laughs> Praise God. Because when they said 13 months, I was like, oh my goodness, me, I can't do, Lord, this ain't me. Because I was under the impression that the Christian walk is peachy keen, that it's easy, that everything just goes your way because you're a Christian. 
I read what Jesus said, if the world hates you, remember, hate me first. I read that. I read where the Lord said that you will be uh, persecuted and all of that. I read all of that. But now here it was coming into play in my life. It was a hard pill to swallow. But I learned in that, that when God is dealing with you, you cannot go to the left or to the right. You can't shake them off. You can't elbow them out the way. You can't throw no kick. You can't throw no punch. You can't do anything. But you have to just do what God tells you to do. Especially when he's the Lord of your life. I tell you, that's, that was a powerful show. That was really, really, really a powerful show. Join us the next time when the Lord leads us to go back in the scripture with some more information. Maybe it'll be with one of my friends. Maybe it'll be just me. I don't know. Either way, the Lord will be orchestrating the lesson. God bless you. And take care <laughs> till the next time. In Jesus' name. Lord, I just thank you for all that I have in you. And all that you are in my life. For all that you've done for thy servant. Lord, you're just so wonderful. You're just so wonderful. I can't think of how else my life would be without you. As long as I have Jesus. I have a satisfied heart. This is my prayer. Sometimes I don't have food for my table. I'm glad, I'm glad I know. Someone.